Issan Habre has been called the Pinochet of Africa. He ruled Chad with an iron fist for eight years. He's accused of human rights violations, including imprisonment without trial and the systematic use of torture. After Habre fled the country, investigators discovered mass graves in the desert and accused the dictator of the deaths of more than 40,000 of his fellow Chadians. The trial of Hissan Habre could be the first in which a former African dictator is actually prosecuted in another African country and would mark the end of an international manhunt that has taken more than 10 frustrating years. In the Christian part of the city lives one of the key witnesses for the prosecution, Clement Abefuta. He and four other prisoners were ordered to bury the victims of the regime. These barren fields became a huge secret cemetery. And right now we are coming to the common grave and from here on it is just corpses from the common grave to wait at the back it's just all corpses every day it was seven eight ten twenty thirty forty yeah, every day he personally buried more than a thousand people over the course of four years it was his testimony that led to the discovery of the first mass graves This footage, which dates from 1991, has never been seen before. A few months after Habre's fall, investigators organized searches at the Plain of the Dead. They discovered more than 30 skeletons at the precise spot where Abai Futa said he had dug a common grave. These are some depictions of the abuses, as sketched by an ex-prisoner. The goal was to extract confessions by any means necessary. Jeanette Mbaye was four months pregnant when she was arrested. For one week, she too was tortured, this time with electric currents. They put the electric wire here here and here on my breast and I fainted without even realizing it did you tell them you were pregnant yes I told them I was pregnant but they didn't care about that Brody visited Njamina the capital of Chad in 2001 11 years after Habre's overthrow when he came across old files left by the documentation and security agency, the notorious DDS, he knew he'd struck gold. This has to do with detentions, with arrests, with search warrants, with spying reports. In 2006, the African Union demanded Senegal hold Habre's trial in Dakar. Since then, however, nothing has happened. Today, September the 16th, 2008, marks a new attempt to force the Senegalese into taking action. The victims and their lawyers will file a suit at the courthouse. The suit for crimes against humanity is 150 pages long with three annexes containing hundreds of documents. Symbolically, the victim's Chadian lawyer is presenting it to the prosecutor. We filed the suit. Now it's up to the justice system to do its work. These and other victims want the former dictator to be tried here in Dakar for crimes against humanity. But two weeks later, there's a bombshell. In an interview in a Spanish newspaper, the Senegalese president, Abdoulaye Awad, issues a threat. He warns there will be no Habre trial unless Senegal receives 40 million US dollars from the international community, and quickly. This is all the more astonishing since the European Union has already agreed to finance the trial, but is waiting for a realistic budget. But do the authorities in Senegal really have the political will to try Hissène Habre? Ten years of red tape and legal proceedings, hundreds of victims' testimonies gathered, thousands of documents seized, and three lawsuits. 
apparently all in vain as Habre continues to enjoy a comfortable retirement in Dakar, with no indication that he'll ever stand trial.